are, are the expert going to check? So you need to prepare. Uh, the most easiest way is you need to prepare uh, a medium or a document that include together your conceptual definition, operational definition that include all the components that you need, you want to measure in your instrument, and then together with your instrument. So what the, the, the expert will do is he or she will evaluate the alignment between the items with the items in your instrument with the element uh, indicated in your operational definition. Faham? Boleh, boleh nampak tak? Tak boleh nampak eh? Tak apa, sekejap lagi saya tunjuk macam mana. Okay, so assessment of content validity focus on whether aspects of the domain of a construct have been excluded and aspects of the domain of a distinctly different construct have been included. So we want to make sure that, okay, if there is any aspect that been measuring similar thing, okay, if let's say the items need measuring quite similar thing, we try to exclude and then the items that measuring different aspects of the variable being included in the item. Itu yang that's why, why that, that is why we need the expert okay to uh, to evaluate the content validity of your instrument. Okay, it is based on the subjective judgment and then it is uh, difficult to be quantified with statistics. Okay, content validity ni memang susah sebab dia based on the uh, subjective evaluation by the expert. Okay, but if you use scale, okay, if you use scale, okay, to measure the applicability of the instrument, then it is possible to quantify the result. Okay. Okay, example, eh. And this one. Kena tunjuk satu Excel sheet. Okay, I didn't see that. Uh, I didn't see that this is uh, the best way, but this is one of the way how you can prepare your uh, content validity. Okay, so first you prepare uh, your conceptual definition related to the particular variable. For example, eh? so this is for example the, uh, the DV, the variable is employee retention. So you indicate the conceptual definition. Okay, the, con the conceptual definition is very crucial because uh, it will provide the general element to be included in the uh, measurement, but in conceptual form. Okay, and then you need to provide your operational definition. So this one will uh, will highlight the elements or the, const the subconstruct to be measured okay, in your study. Okay, so operational definition it will specify what are the element of uh, employee retention that will be measured in your study? Okay, so then you, you indicate the list of items here. The list of your items here. Okay, so based on these items, okay, the, so the expert later on will make judgment. Either the, these items measuring what being included in your operational definition or not. Dia akan tengok sama ada tally tak item yang terletak kat sini dengan elemen ni. For example, the main the main element uh, of uh, employee retention is willingness of an employee to stay. So dia akan tengok keselarian antara item ni dengan faktor ni, dengan willingness of an employee to stay. Ha, ini contoh macam mana expert akan evaluate. Okay, uh, the expert will provide you with the content validity. Dia nak make sure yang item ni selari dengan your operational definition. Okay, clear eh? Nampak eh? Macam mana kita buat content validity? Clear? Boleh boleh faham tak? Semua senyap tu? Bisa pula. Okay, so ini tadi, okay, selalu saya kata... Uh, 
Content validity ni is based on uh, uh, subjective judgement eh. But if you come up with scale. Ha, scale tu macam mana? Hold on. Ada, ada contoh. Sikit eh. Mana saya letak ni. Hmm. Okay. This is the example. Okay. You provide your item. For example, your item, uh, your DV consists of 10, uh, 12 items, for example. So this is the list of your items. Okay, and then you measure them according to the relevancy of the item. Ah, so you let, you let uh, uh, the judge or the expert uh, give marks, okay, or uh, rank in terms of the relevancy of your item accordingly, according to the number ni. 1, 2, scale ni. 1, 2, irrelevant. 3, 4, relevant. Uh, so, in which kita come out dengan another scale. Not the like, like scale that uh, that respondent that the respondent going to use. Not that one. But this one, a new scale which is uh, to measure the relevancy of the item uh, uh, apa tu, uh, related to your uh, operational definition of that particular variable. Faham tak? Kita datang dengan satu skala baru. Okay, kita ada 12, 12 item dan kita masukkan. Kita let, uh, we let the expert or judge give or, or rate the items uh, according to the relevancy based on the indicated operational definition. Uh, ini contoh. Okay, kalau let's see Q1, untuk soalan 1, expert 1, the first expert said that it is relevant. 3. But the, the, uh, apa tu dia bagi point 3. So, Q2, 3. Q3 ni dia bagi 1 which is irrelevant. Ha, ini contoh uh, uh, apa tu the uh, the uh, the measurement lah macam mana kita nak quantify either the items tu relevant or not. Okay. Ini contoh eh. Okay. Next one. I have a question. Yes. The expert, the experts will review the question. In this case, the expert is referring to JKEUPN or who? Who is the expert? No. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, in this case, okay, uh, so uh, expert ni, it can be someone from the practice. Okay, for example, your study related to employee turnover. So probably you may hire someone from the industry that uh, they are dealing with the employee turnover. So settle so that one person. Another person is anybody that has uh, academic background related to the area. Itu satu. JKE UPM, the main intention is to look for the ethical term. Uh, ethic, the, the, in terms of implementing uh, the study. So, they, they, uh, we need to make, uh, they need to make sure that uh, the study that we are proposing did, uh, didn't bring harm, do not bring harm, any harm to our respondent. Uh, so, that's why they akan go through instrument, they akan tengok sama ada instrument kita tu akan tanya soalan-soalan yang sensitif ataupun tak. Okay, dia sebenarnya dah di luar bidang JKE UPM untuk tengok keselarian tu, no. It's not the content validity eh. Dia tengok dari segi etik sama ada soalan-soalan yang ditanya tu sensitif tak dekat individu responden kita. Contohnya kalau kita tanya soalan berkenaan dengan seksual, seksual terhadap pelajar-pelajar sekolah rendah contohnya. So it's quite sensitive to those group. So dia akan tengok daripada segitu. Dia, dia tak tengok dari segi keselarian variable tu. Sebenarnya kalau dia bagi komen keselarian variable tu, dia dah go beyond dia punya power lah sebenarnya. Okay? Faham eh? Ada lagi soalan? Uh, bila doktor cakap uh, hire, do we need to pay them? Oh. Lillahi ta'ala je. Lillahi ta'ala. <laughs> okay. 
um, depend eh, depend if let's say you uh, you apply you, you have uh, the, the research grant so then you can you can have some allocation for them but uh, to me lah to me for uh, among students ni I don't think that the lecturer will take money lah tak ada pun uh, kita tak ambil any fees pun okay but uh, biasanya yang the most easiest way you will go to your supervisor itu yang paling senang Okay, biasanya kita tak bayar tapi ada yang berbayar. If let's say uh, you have the research grant, then you can have some allocation lah. Uh, you can provide some allocation in your budget. Tapi kalau untuk you all yang tak ada grant ni, biasanya tak ada lah. Tapi kalau kita yang di peringkat yang memang ada grant ni, biasanya kita akan bayar. Because we use their expertise and time as well lah. Okay, eh, kita tengok kedudukan kita jugalah kalau let's say ada grant, Ha, bolehlah bagi kalau tak ada tak apa kalau untuk lecturer biasanya tak ada pun okey we, we we kita pun akan jadikan benda tu sebagai kita punya uh, apa tu uh, kita boleh increase kan kita punya add on dalam CV juga pun okey to be the expert to be the panel for content validity ni boleh faham eh lagi Ada dah. Okay, so how to increase content validity? So this is the ways that you can use. Eh? So first through the literature first, you make a comparison. You make, you make sure that in your operational definition, you already include all the necessary elements of the variable. Kita masukkan. So that's why kita kena ada very vast or very wide literature review. So kita we, already, we know that we already cover all, uh, all the elements uh, that should be covered when we want to propose a certain variable ni. Okay, and then we it is based on the expert reviews. Expert reviews ni, uh, yang tadi, and then group interviews. Group interviews ni biasanya applicable if you have some, if you have more time and then you uh, you are going to establish a new instrument. Uh, then you can go to the uh, question database. Uh, itu contoh-contoh yang kita boleh guna to increase the content validity. Okay. Okay, so this is how we can do the content validity. Ini sebenarnya saya dah tunjuk tadi. Okay, so first prepare the content validation form. Okay, so this is the example. Okay, so you provide with the instruction. Okay, and then this is the degree of relevance what I said before dalam Excel tadi. Okay, kita provide satu new uh, new skala, new scale. Okay, which is uh, to measure the relevancy of the item. Okay, for example, one, the item is not relevant to measure the domain. Two, the item is somewhat relevant to the, uh, to, uh, to the measured domain. Three, the item is quite relevant to the measured domain. And then four, the item is highly relevant to the measured domain. Okay, so ini dia punya degree of relevancy. Okay, next one. Okay, so we prepare in this form. Kita buat dalam bentuk ni. Ini sebelum kita buat data collection eh. Ini sebelum kita buat pilot test pun. Okay. So for example, you provide with your DV. Okay. And then the definition, your operational definition. And then the list of item. Okay. So then later on, the expert will evaluate the relevancy of your items. Okay. Then select a review or panel of, uh, or re a review panel of expert. You select lah. Sama ada you boleh pilih sendiri. So you tahu siapa you should know who who has the expert in the area. Okay and then conduct content validity using face-to-face -face, which is for example expert panel meeting and non-face-to-face. -face, for example online. Or you may uh, apa tu, leave the form to them and then give them some time to uh, respond or to uh, to evaluate the the uh, apa tu the form pun boleh okay and then experts critically review the domain and items okay strongly suggest to give verbal or written comment so meaning that next to this column next to the relevance column ni you add one column which is remarks so that uh, your expert can include their comment lah if uh, any improvement needed okay and then expert provides score on each item. Okay, and then you can calculate the content validity index CVI. Okay, so based on the value given uh, based on the scale, okay, or rating given by the expert, then you can calculate the content validity index. Okay, so ini dia punya calculation for uh, guideline for cal uh, to calculate the content validity index. Okay, if you have two expert, okay, at least the values, the CVI value should be at least 0.8 
Okay, if you have three of a uh, three to five expert, CVI should be one. At, uh, if at least six expert, six and above, eh? Okay, point eight, uh, point eight three. Okay, six to eight expert, at least point eight three, and then nine expert and above, at least point seven eight. Okay, so these are the CVI values. Okay, so to calculate the content validity index, ni, there are two types. Okay, first content validity index for item, which is ICVI, item content validity index. The second one is content validity index for scale, which is scale content validity index. Okay, so two methods to calculate SCVI, scale, uh, uh, scale content validity index. First, we need to get the average of ICVI score for all items on the scale, which is uh, SCVI, Scale Content Validity Index, divided by average ICVI. And then uh, the proportion of items of the scale that achieve a relevant scale of three or four by expert. Okay, yang ni, dia punya calculation is here. Eh? Hold on, eh? let me show you the... How to calculate. Okay, so this is the template. The template to calculate the uh, content validity in the ICVI and SCVI. Okay, in, uh, uh, item content validity index and uh, scale content validity index. Okay, so first template ni, tadi yang saya dah terangkan. Okay, this is based on the evaluation or rating given by your expert. So in this case, so I have 10 experts. Okay, 10 expert. Okay, so based on this one, okay, uh, so basically I developed this template based on a suggestion given by Yusuf 2019. Uh, so, dia punya recommendation tu, saya develop skala ni. Saya develop template ni. Okay, so based on the 10 uh, expert review ni, expert rating ni, we transform eh, we transform uh, the original scale which is from 1 to 4, Okay, the original scale 1 to 4, I transform to two new scale, which is 0, 1. 0 or 1. Okay, binary lah, eh? binary. So, 1 and 2 ni referring to 0, 3 and 4 uh, referring to 1. Okay, sebenarnya kalau kat sini, you all nak guna 0 to 0 or 1 from the very beginning pun should be okay. Boleh. Okay, but the last time ada yang tanya, tak boleh ke daripada awal ni dia nak pakai kosong satu? Boleh. Okay, sahaja-sahaja nak tunjuk tiga, empat ni eh. Okay. Sebab biasanya kalau untuk when, bila kita buat rating scale ni, kalau kita bagi kosong satu tu nampak objektif sangat. That's why kita come out dengan one to four. Okay, but at the end of the day, what we use is zero one binary eh. Okay, so we transform... Uh, this original rating ni into binary system 0, 1. Okay, and then we get the average. Okay, kita dapatkan purata dia. Okay, purata ni biasalah eh. Sum ni divide by number of item. Sum, sum of the rating ni divide by number of item which is 12. So, I got the uh, the average for each uh, apa tu, for each item according, sorry, for each expert. Ha, saya dapat average purata instrumen ni untuk setiap expert. Okay. Dan kemudian saya dapatkan pula average ni untuk expert pula. Ni based on item. Individual expert, item. Dan this one saya dapatkan, I get the average for the whole expert. Saya tambahkan semua ni. Okay, I, I add all this value and then divide by 10 expert. Okay. So this one will give me the, the, the value of average proportion of items judged as relevance across the 10 experts. So, which is equals to 0 0.91. Okay. So far, so good. Faham lagi tak setakat ni? Any question? Why do we need content validity index? So far, so good eh? Clear eh? Okay, good. At least nampak ada yang good tu rasa lega. Okay, so ini saya uh, saya senaraikan eh, the expert agreement according to the item. Okay, so kalau tengok based on item ni. Okay, based on the first items. Okay, we see, we can see that all the expert agree. Okay, then item ni all the expert agree based on the first item. Second item, 
one disagree. Orang ni, expert kedua tak bersetuju. Okay, uh, item number three, none of the, none of the expert agree. Uh, yang the rest ni semua agree. Uh, so, satu ni. So, the possibility to omit lah. Q3 ni possibility untuk kita omit. Okay, and then kita calculate the ICVI ni. Okay, expert in agreement divided by number of expert. Okay, expert in agreement. This one divided by number of expert. 10 divided by 10. Okay, this one. Expert number of expert 10 divided by 9. Okay, ICVI ni expert in agreement. Which is 9, sorry. Expert in agreement divided by number of expert. 9 divided by 10. Okay, bilangan expert yang bersetuju bahagikan dengan uh, dengan jumlah expert. Okay, so hak ni kosong. And then this one 10 bagi 10, 10 divided by 10. The rest pun 10 divided by 10. So we get the ICVI. So this one ni for this one. Ini sebenarnya slide tadi ya. Ini. Ini. Ah, CVI for item. ICVI. So kita dapat tadi. Dah dapatkan untuk uh, item content validity index. So kat sini pun kita dah boleh report satu. Okay. Yang this one ni. Okay. ICVI for item. Item content validity index. So dah dapat satu. Okay. Next one. Kita nak calculate the SCVI pula. Okay, first we need uh, from the ICVI ni to calculate the universal, we need to calculate the universal agreement. Okay, so universal agreement ni, okay, if all expert agree, ha, ni saya dah letak dia punya ni, if all expert agree, one. If at least one expert disagree, zero. So based on this one, first item one, universal agreement, agree, semua agree, all agree. Item number two, because because one disagreed, so we consider zero. Same goes to question number three. Okay, since all the uh, expert disagree, so we we uh, we uh, we refer it as zero. So the rest one. Okay, so then we get the sum of UA, sum of UA. So we just sum up everything. So the the question, the answer is ten. Okay, so then this one ten is divided by uh ten divided Asal sum of ICVI. Okay. 10. Uh, sekejap ni saya terlupa. ICVI relevance. Okay. 10 divided by number of items. Okay. 10 divided by 12. Kat sini 10 bahagi dengan 12. Okay. Dapat tak 0.83? Sepuluh bahagi dengan 12. Okay. Dapat. Eh? 10 divided by 12. Number of uh, sum of UA, sum of universal agreement divided by number of item which is 12. So equals to 0 0.83. So this is our scale, con uh, scale content validity index. So see, so in this case, based on the cut of point that I indicated earlier. Okay. So for nine, uh, nih, at least nine expert. Uh, because in this case, I have 10. So, because the, the answer is uh, 0 0.83, which is beyond or above the value of 0 0.78. So, I can conclude that, okay, the, my items is met the content validity criteria. Uh, itu pun boleh. Faham eh? Macam mana nak kira? Boleh eh? Boleh. InsyaAllah. Okay, good. Alhamdulillah. Okay, ni settle. Okay, so next one is criterion validity. Content validity settle, face validity settle. Okay, so criterion validity ni measure how well one instrument stacks up against another instrument or predictor. Uh, Dr. Normi, yes? before that, do we need to fulfill all the face validity, content validity, criterion validity, and the construct validity? We need, we, do we need to fulfill all the all the the four validity in our <laughs> in our dissertation? Ah, oh, okay. Not necessary, yeah, 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 somehow it depends on the types of study. Because uh, for for the study that use the adapted instrument, so most of the time you will only you will only report face and content validity, okay. But for criterion validity, ni 
It is suitable for a newly developed instrument. Uh, newly okay, developed okay. instrument. Uh, dia tak semua sesuai. Okay, so criteria ni, uh, how you measure how well one instrument stacks up against another instrument or predictor. Maksudnya, sometimes eh, uh, we want to measure one variable. But the instrument ni, the instrument, uh, the, the, there is no instrument, there is no existing instrument that suit with our interest available in literature. Ada juga keadaan macam tu. Ataupun, okay, the instrument is there but it is not reachable or accessible to us. Uh, sometimes because of the copyright, because you have to buy the instrument, so it is not accessible. Okay, uh, so that's why the researcher may come up with the alternative to develop a new instrument. Okay, so that's why kat sini dia akan tengok how well. Maksudnya kita dah, for example, in the case where you already have one established instrument, so, but you still want to develop a new one, so you want to, you need to check the newly developed instrument ni stacks up together, stacks up similar on different with the existing instrument. Kita akan bandingkan dengan existing instrument. Okay, it implies that the outcome of one assessment can be used as a substitute test for the established gold standard criterion test. Eh, kita nak develop satu yang baru yang kita boleh gantikan dengan satu instrumen yang good standard. Eh, eh. So, dia ada dua jenis. Eh, concurrent dengan predictive validity. Okay, criteria validity ni there are two types. Concurrent and predictive validity. Okay, what is concurrent? Doctor. Yes. Uh, Syahrul ni. Uh, for the sake of our dissertation tu, uh, face validity dengan content validity ni at least ada satu lah yang we have to do it lah for the question. Content validity Dua. and uh, face validity because face validity ni is the sup, the most superficial proof of validity. Superficial. So biasanya kita buat dua-dua, report dua-dua. Paling senang lah content validity dengan face validity tu. Content validity okay. tu not necessarily you calculate the ICBI. ICBI tu for advanced level dah actually. Okay, for master science. So, uh, we can refer to our supervisor lah. Yes. To help us on the... Yes. You can uh, refer to your supervisor, uh, academic supervisor, or you can refer to the supervisor at your workplace if you conducted the study related to something that is happening within your organization. Possible. Dua-dua boleh. Okay. Boleh eh? Okay. Lagi, so ada lagi soalan eh? Adalah. Okay, concurrent first eh, concurrent uh, validity. So concurrent validity ni reflect two measures which is criterion measure and a target test. Criterion measure and a target test are given at relatively the same point in time and then the results of the two tests concur with one another. To conduct the concurrent validity ni, you have two instruments. First, the one newly developed instrument. The second one, the gold standard. Okay, then you distribute the two instruments ni at similar time. Okay, you you distribute the you distribute and collect the two instruments in similar time. Okay, and then survey instrument in question be judged against some other method that is acknowledged as a gold standard for assessing the same variable. Then after that, you correlate the two findings, the uh, the two uh, the two uh apa tu findings uh. The findings of the two instrument. Uh, you try to co uh, try correlate. Okay, so positive height correlation will indicate good concurrent validity for similar attributes. Negative height correlation indicates good concurrent validity for a test measuring attributes that is opposite to the standard test. Uh, depending which one uh, that is of your interest lah. Okay, faham eh? Concurrent validity ni, you have. So you have two instrument. The first one, the newly developed instrument. The second one, a standard, uh, standard, uh, the gold standard instrument. You distribute at the same time. Then you correlate them. Okay. Okay. So ini. Okay. So why do we need the new instrument? 
tadi yang saya cakap tadi kenapa kita perlu ada uh, perlu instrumen baru so first sebab existing gold instrument ni cumbersome ataupun expensive hmm, eh? sebab tu kita kena develop new one okay next one predictive any question related to concurrent validity concurrent validity tu concurrent current kita buat sekarang sekali okay Predictive validity ni is ability of a survey instrument to forecast future events or behaviors, attitude or outcomes. Ha. Dia ada instrument yang bila kita pakai tu dia sebenarnya boleh predict the future outcomes. Okay, for example, we use to predict response to stimulus, election winners, success of an intervention, for example. Okay, so we establish by comparing a measure with the future occurrence of another which is highly valid measure. Okay, so for example, eh, example, contohlah eh, SPM exam. Ha. SPM exam, the result of SPM exam can determine the student survivability in university, for example. Ha. So, maksudnya, soalan, soalan SPM ni, dia boleh digunakan untuk predict sama ada seorang pelajar tu, seorang calon tu boleh survive tak during dia degree life. Ha, semasa dia belajar dekat undergraduate uh, undergraduate ni, kat universiti ni. Dia boleh survive ke tak? Ha, contoh, dia boleh predict. Contoh eh, itu contoh. Okay, we measure by correlation coefficient between the initial test and then the secondary outcome. Okay, so ini contoh eh, college entrance test score. Contohnya sebelum se seorang uh, graduan tu masuk Uh, ke, uh, ke college ataupun universiti kita bagi satu test which is the college entrance test score so based on test score ni dia akan tengok okay uh, the student ni dia boleh survive tak after first year college ni uh, dia, akan, dia akan predict uh, maksudnya ni yang akan digunakan sebagai uh, apa tu ujian kemasukan contohnya yang you all jadi PTD contohnya ada ujian kemasukan uh, itu predictive validity maksudnya ujian tu dia boleh menentukan kalau pas if the uh, if the part, uh, apa tu uh, uh, participant pass that question means that he or she able to survive ha, dia boleh buat benda tu kalau dia tak pass maksudnya tak boleh ha, itu maksud predictive validity faham eh boleh clear predictive validity ni being conducted at two different point of time kalau concurrent, it happen, we measure it at the same time. Predictive, it happen or we forecast the future occurrence. Eh? Okay, any question? Clear? Clear, eh? Okay, next one, construct validity. Uh, construct validity ni biasanya dibuat oleh higher level lah. Okay. Okay, it determine the extent to which a measure represent concept it should represent and does not represent concept it should not represent. It quite it sounds quite similar with content validity, but this one is more in depth. Okay, ni lagi mendalam. Okay, kat sini kita nak tahu sama ada instrumen kita tu betul betul ukur apa yang dipatut ukur ataupun Uh, maksudnya instrumen kita tu dia include elemen yang perlu dimasukkan ataupun tak ha, eh? So it involve making comparison between a new measure and existing okay, Valid measures of the same concept Cara kita nak buat macam mana First we compare the newly developed instrument Or the instrument that we want to measure with the existing instrument kita buat comparison. Sama tak instrumen yang kita ada ni dengan yang yang measure yang yang mengukur benda yang sama yang dah ada. Okey. Yang kedua, kita bandingkan we contrast the new measure with existing valid measures of different concept. Hmm. Satu tadi kita bandingkan the newly we compare the newly developed instrument With the existing instrument measuring similar thing, similar concept. The second step, we contrast, we compare, okay, the newly developed instrument with uh, the existing instrument that measure different concept. 
but the concept ni quite similar. Uh, sebab tu when you go through your literature, you will find term okay, that use interchangeably referring to the, the term that you want to use. And then sometimes, okay, there are terms that look similar, but it means different thing. Sebab tu, that is why when you preparing your proposal or when you write your dissertation or thesis, please make sure the consistency of the term use. Okay, guna perkataan yang consistent. For example, job performance and work. Uh, job performance, lagi satu term dia. Uh, apa eh? Lagi satu term. Job performance, work performance. Uh, Allah, saya lupa. Lagi satu, orang lupa perkataan dia. They look similar but it is referring to two different things. Eh? So ini maksudnya daripada sini lah Construct validity ni kita akan tengok sama ke tak sama Dia sepatutnya kalau instrumen yang sama Mengukur benda yang sama Dia sama, ada persamaan Kalau benda-benda benda yang berbeza Dia patut berbeza Okay So the most, it is the most valuable Yet most difficult to be assessed hmm. Paling penting, paling tinggi ni Construct validity ni Tapi paling susah untuk kita assess Okay sebab dia takes time Okay, there are two types of construct validity which is convergent validity. The second one is diverge. Converge, diverge. Sama, tak sama. Okay. Convergent validity. So, convergent validity refers to the level of agreement between two tests that are being used to measure the same construct. Two construct measuring similar thing. We want to know the, the level of agreement. The level of similarities between the two construct. Okay, so convergent validity uh, ask question related to does the measure correlate or converge with another measure of the same construct. Uh, so maksudnya kalau kat convergent validity ni when we correlate the two instrument, we expect the two instrument has the two instrument have high high correlation value. Okay. So we establish by showing a strong relationship between the scale under review and another validated scale thought to measure the same construct. Okay, so we measure by correlation coefficient, then correlation coefficient value larger or equals to 0.4 indicates acceptable convergent validity. Okay, dia ada dua instrumen, dua instrumen mengukur dua benda yang sama. Okay, dan kita distribute the questionnaire. Then kita collect, kita buat correlate. Then kita correlate. After we correlate, we make sure, okay, the correlation coefficient value at least 0.4 and above. So that we can prove the, uh, uh, apa tu, we can indicate the proof as the proof of convergent validity. Clear? Faham eh? Okay. Diverge. Diverge ni berbeza. Okay, it is also known as discriminant validity. How much the two instruments different from one and another. Okay, so lack of correlation between the scale under review and scale stop to assess different uh, construct. So we expect the lack of correlation. Okay, the two construct ni because they construct yang berbeza, so kita expect dia ada correlation yang rendah. Okay, so ability of a scale to distinguish different groups of subject. Then it's also measured by correlation coefficient. Sama juga dengan the, uh, uh, apa tu convergent validity tadi. So which is, uh, tapi the correlation coefficient value lesser or equals to 0.3 indicate evidence for divergent validity. Converge, kita nak uh, the correlation coefficient value high but diverge, we want lower correlation coefficient value. Faham eh? Any question? Ada eh? Okay. Relationship between reliability and validity. So ni saya rasa saya dah tekankan hari tu awal-awal. Okay. A, measure, a, a, measure, a measuring instrument can be reliable without being, being valid. 
but it cannot be valid until it is first reliable. Instrument ni dia uh, kalau dia tak reliable, dia tak uh, dia tak akan valid. Okay, kalau dia tak konsisten, dia tak akan valid. Dia tak akan ukur benda yang patut diukur. Okay, tapi uh, instrument tu boleh jadi dia reliable, tapi dia tak valid. Okay, a reliable instrument not necessarily valid, but a valid instrument confirm to be reliable. Okay. Contoh ada? Ha. Satu instrumen yang konsisten. Okay. Satu instrumen yang mengukur benda, yang memberi keputusan yang sama berulang kali. Okay. Uh, tidak semestinya valid. Tidak semestinya mengukur benda yang patut diukur. But a valid instrument confirm to be a reliable instrument at the first place. Ha. Instrumen yang reliable tak semestinya valid. Tapi instrumen yang valid wajib ataupun mesti confirm dia reliable. Boleh? Doktor, tapi kita kena fulfill dua-dua kan doktor kan? Kena reliable yeah. dan valid kan? Ya. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Kita kena fulfill dua-dua. Okay. Ini steps in instrument construction and evaluation lah. Ni macam mana kalau you all nak buat new instrument eh. Select the theory and conceptually, conceptually define the variable. Ni ni macam mana kita nak develop a new instrument from scratch. Okay, macam kalau case you all, hari tu saya dah kenalkan dua term. Adapt and adopt if you want to use the existing instrument. Nak buat instrument ni bukan kita main pick, 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 pick from literature in five weeks eh. No. Dia involve testing. Dan kita develop tu biasanya according to construct. Kita tak develop lima construct, lima IV sekali tak. Satu-satu. Okay and even to develop one instrument ni, it can produce one PhD study. Satu PhD untuk in, untuk come up with instrument. Untuk develop a new instrument. For example, instrument to measure job performance. Satu-satu boleh jadi satu thesis PhD. Okay. Uh, ni step dia lah. Eh, tak ada pokok kat sini. Hmm, ni step. Ni step sahaja. Okay so this is the uh, general step lah eh. From the literature review. Nak buat instrumen pun we need to go through the literature. We come up the concept. Concept dulu. Okay. To measure that variable. So what should be included. Uh, eh. And then based on the uh, based on the concept ni. We draft the item pool. Item. We list down the possible items reflecting that particular construct. Okay, and then we come up with version 1. Okay, based on version 1 ni, kita format. We format. We arrange according to the to its level. Okay, and then we do the pilot testing. Okay, we administer. We check, uh, we select items and drafting new items based on the feedback that we receive from the pilot. Okay, we arrange in terms of item difficulty, inter item consistency, item discriminability, instrument reliability and then we come up with version 2. Okay, then version 2 we administer again and then we compare with version 1. Okay, we select all and all revising item, item difficulties, inter item consistency, item discriminability and instrument reliability. Okay, and then we check for external criterion validity and then we come up with version 3 if any changes uh, done. Okay, and then kita repeat lagi benda yang sama until version 4. Kalau dah siap, then siap. Okay, ini dia punya proses. Proses dia dalam cycle to come up with the instrument. Okay, any question so far? Uh, uh, saya nak tanya yang memang pilot apa pilot test ni memang kita kena buat kan doktor memang kena hmm, ni kena okey uh, if you remember again eh um, if let's say we uh, uh, if if you newly if you newly develop a new instrument if you develop a newly instrument if you develop a new instrument it is compulsory Ha, kalau sebab tadi awal-awal itu minggu lepas saya cerita instrumen ni satu kita kita memang um, nak baru nak develop okey second one we want uh, we take uh, apa tu we take it from literature from existing instrument but if you want to take it from the existing uh, existing literature there are two 
types. Either we adapt or adopt. Tapi tadi kalau develop yang baru, it is compulsory to conduct the pilot study. Okay. And then, uh, if uh, if we take the instrument from the existing source, okay, we, we have two options. Either we adapt or adopt. If we adapt the instrument, it is compulsory to do the pilot study. But if you adopt, it is not compulsory. Uh, but please remember the condition where you should adopt and adapt. Okay. Ingat balik, bila kita patut adapt and then bila kita patut adopt. Uh, so pilot study ni, dia pada saya sangat penting. Sama ada you develop ataupun you adapt. Sebab most of quantitative study ni, we rarely adopt. Okay, adopt ni kita adopt bila kita tak ada buat perubahan apa-apa daripada original original researcher. The, the respondent should be similar, the setting should be similar. Uh, respondent, setting, uh, apa lagi? Uh, administering the way we administer the questions should be similar. Uh, so we adopt ni basically if we want to replicate a study. Kalau kita nak replicate, barulah kita adopt. But most of the, start of the time, we adapt. Kalau kita adapt, compulsory to do or to proceed with pilot study or pilot test. Okay? Okay. So after the questionnaire, measuring all variable has been constructed, it is necessary to pilot the form on a representative sample of about 10 to 30 respondent. So this is my recommendation. Because pilot study ni, it is not the actual study. Okay, it is not the actual study. Eh? We have no intention to test the objective. No. The main purpose of the pilot study is we want to check the applicability of our instrument, of our items. Okay, itu sahaja. That's why the number is small. Okay, so pilot study involves the administration of the survey to a small group of individuals that share similar characteristics with actual research, research respondent. So make sure respondent kita dalam pilot study ni share similar characteristic with the respondent in our actual research. Ha, dia karakter dia kena sama. Okay. It provides the opportunity to assess the appropriateness of the data collection methods. Um, contohnya kalau kita nak uh, if uh, for your actual data collection you want to use uh, apa tu online survey. Uh, so this is where you can test okay, the applicability of the online survey to your study. Okay, and then uh, you can also test other procedures and to make changes if necessary. Okay, it also permits a preliminary testing of the hypothesis which may give some indication of its tenability and suggest whether future refinement is needed. Tapi ni tak, biasanya kita tak buat lah because the, small, the sample is very small. Okay, the purpose is not uh, uh, priority for testing hypothesis. Eh? So this process helps the researcher determine the survey's validity and its reliability. So clear instructions and clear understanding of the process are necessary to achieve data of good quality. So kat sini lah, kalau you all ada any amendment, you should amend at this point. Because after you distribute your Actual data collection, you cannot do any amendment anymore. Tak boleh dah. Bila kita proceed sahaja dengan actual data collection, dah tak boleh dah. Kita hanya boleh adjust kat sini je. This is the final adjustment for quantitative researcher. Kalau qualitative lain. Quantitative lain. Qualitative? Yeah. Yes, yes, Anissa. Sorry, Doctor nak tanya. Uh, if you say, mention that uh, the individuals that share similar characteristics with actual research respondents, mm -hmm. it means um, kita tak tak bagi pilot study ni dekat dekat katakanlah saya buat dekat uh, tempat X, so kita tak kita tak ambil dalam ten to thirty respondents in the same tempat X tu kan? Ataupun we can kita boleh boleh buat pilot study ni dekat orang lain tapi make sure it share similar characteristic. Macam tu boleh tak? Okay, uh, example like this. Eh? For example, in your study, you want to com uh, you want to conduct your actual study among secondary school teachers in Selangor. Contoh, secondary school teachers in Selangor. 
Okay, but for your pilot okay. study, because you don't want to reduce the number of your sample, okay, for uh, Selangorian teachers, so you conduct the study, your, your, you conduct your pilot study among secondary school teachers in Negeri Sembilan. They share similar characteristics because they are, they are still considered secondary school teachers. Okay, the policy apply to them also similar. Uh, in terms of setting pun similar. Okay, the school teaching, uh, the, the working time pun sama. 8 to 5, for example. Okay, and then related, uh, another uh, another example, if, uh, if let's say you want to conduct your study in manufacturing company A, uh, which is in your opinion, there is no other organization that shared similar characteristic with this organization. Uh, eh? It's also possible for you to conduct your pilot test in that company A. Okay. Okay. So, for example, the company A consists of uh, 500 employees. Okay. So, you take 30 out of 500. Okay. okay, meaning that in your final study, in your final research, you should omit that 30 respondent from your overall population. So the final population should be only 470. Because the respondent that included under the pilot test shouldn't be in your actual study. Faham? Jadi dua kali ambil lah ah, Yes, sebab kita tak nak dia dua kali Sebab nanti dia akan ada learning effect Learning effect, lagipun ni sebabnya The purpose kita nak tahu pasal instrument dia dulu Bukan nak tahu pasal correlation pun Okay nah, Itu dua situasi berbeza Faham? Okay, okay. alright, thank you doctor ah, Thank you Okay, so this is the example uh, Example apa ni? Instrument Ha, ni instrumen lah eh. So last time, eh, for example lah eh, um, there are there are few instrumen that that uh, that you go through the literature. When you go through the literature, you cannot get the copy. Okay, you cannot get the copy the uh, the full version of the full copy of the instrumen. What you can do is you can contact the instrumen. Eh, sorry, you can contact uh, the scholar that develop the instrumen. Eh, you can contact. Boleh contact and then get the permission. And then regarding uh, the ethical concern, because some of uh, apa tu in either JKE form, eh, the ethics committee ni will check either you get the uh, agreement ataupun uh, persetujuan daripada uh, the person who develop the instrument to use the instrument in your study. Ha, you dapat ke tak? If you go through the literature or the article, if you manage to get the instrument from the article, Try to check at the end of the article. Either there is any indication or any statement indicated that for, uh, you can use the instrument for the purpose of academic. Dia kata kadang-kadang, bukan kadang-kadang, mostly lah saya nampak kalau uh, instrument tu ada dekat ada dekat dalam uh, artikel, okay, dia letak the full version tu dalam artikel, dia memang akan letak notes kat situ in which you can use, kalau the purpose of using the instrument is for academic purpose, so no need for you to personally email them to get their permission. You all tengok kat, biasanya ada, cuba perhati betul-betul kalau instrument yang you all dapat original version tu. Okay, but in the case where there's no, there's, uh, there's no such statement mentioned in the article, so the alternative is you can contact your, contact the Uh, contact uh, uh, apa tu uh, the scholar that develop the instrument ha, ni what I did last time lah ok the instrument ni memang tak ada dekat online memang tak ada ok and then uh, the original version was in Dutch dalam bahasa German tak ada lagi dalam bahasa Melayu time tu the VCAP ni VCAP instrument ni so that's why I need to contact the pro professor Dr. Wolfgang ni ok ha, ini, ini contoh lah eh Okay, so any question? Related to... I have one question. Yes. Related to the instruments. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, for each IV, we have to have one instrument, one set of instruments. So let's say... Uh, for the, uh, so does, does that mean that for one set of IV, you have to get it from only one source or you can get it from multiple sources? 
let's say I have to uh, uh, source, so I combine five questions from source number one, means I adapt using the adapt method. Is that possible? Okay. Or I have to use the complete um, instrument from that particular source only? Thank you, Dr. Okay, thank you, Shahira, for a very good question. Eh? Very good question. Okay. Um, to me, lah, eh? to me, I personally didn't advise you to combine uh, to combine two instrument uh, to to combine two uh, to combine two instrument from different sources. I do not recommend, uh, particularly to those at master by coursework level. Okay, because why? When you combining the two instrument, the two instrument that you think measuring different construct or different uh, different sub construct within one variable. Sometimes it is actually measuring similar thing. That's why uh, we, uh, it is very important for you to ensure the uh, uh, the convergent and divergent validity just now. Uh, but kita tak nak dalam satu instrument tu dia ada item mengukur benda yang sama. Kita nak item tu dia mengukur different aspect, uh, uh, measuring different aspect of that construct. Okay, saya tak sebab bila when you combine two different uh, different uh, 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 apa tu different instrument ni there will be the tendency or it can lead you to actually develop a new instrument. Sebab proses dia akan panjang. Okay, you need to do the pilot and then you need to you need to come up with uh, explore uh, not just explore EFA exploratory factor analysis. You need to determine the factor. Ni panjang lagi dia punya instrumentation ni. Nanti later on, if you attend uh, data analysis class, insyaAllah I will elaborate further on how to develop the instrument ni. Ha, lagi ada lagi khusus, even ada khusus untuk develop instrument. Kita combine je sebab probably the concept that been measured within the, these two construct ni different. Nampak sama tapi tak sama. But there are also another case. Okay. For example, eh, this one, one of my students did the study related to um, job flexibility. Uh, in Malaysia, what type or how, how many types of flexibility do we have? In government service, in government sector. Work, uh, 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 apa tu? Work from home, satu. Betul, the place, betul tak? The place where you complete your job, satu. Right. Betul. The second one is flexi hour. Flexi hours. Ah, flexi hour. So we we have two types. Ah, so in this case, it is possible for you to come up with to combine two different instruments to measure two different things. One instrument to measure flexi hour, flexi uh, hour arrangement. Eh? Flexi W H A. Flexi work hour arrangement. Betul eh? Work hour arrangement flexi hour arrangement flexi work flexi arrangement <laughs> mana satu flexi tu work flexi work arrangement dah fwa betul and then another one is work from home the new term the new practice that we integrate in our uh, in government service betul tak uh, so now meaning that when you come up with the operational definition for flexi work arrangement flexible work arrangement in malaysia uh, particularly for the government sector, you should include these two elements. Then these two elements, okay, uh, it should have it, it should have uh, it should has the it uh, apa tu, its own instrument. Uh, macam last time kita ada satu je flexible arrangement, which is referring to our. Tapi nak this time kita ada dua. Uh, faham? Possible dalam case tu. Uh, that's why you need to know your uh, the element to be included uh, in your uh, operational definition ni. Kena betul-betul tahu. Apa yang perlu dimasukkan. That's why kita, kita akan tengok ni. Tally ke tak? Yang ni tak nampak sangat eh. Hmm. Faham eh? Faham tak Syahira? Ada lagi soalan tak? Satu lagi. For each IV for the instrument, there are the maximum set of questions that many not more than 20 or not uh, not more than 20, not less than 10 or something like that. Okay, so I cannot, in terms of the number, I can, the maximum number I cannot propose, but in terms of the minimum number, it shouldn't be less than 3. 
uh, kalau minimum tak boleh less than 3 in terms of maximum i cannot propose but uh, if possible try try not to choose a instrument that has too many items too many ni boleh jadi 30 or 40 just to measure one variable but sometimes you may find you may found one instrument that consists of 40 items uh, so meaning that in that case you need to uh, you need to use uh, another consideration lah for example you search for the uh, items that has good reliability of rombak alpha value or fa good factor loading the term factor loading ni they use when uh, when the analysis ni been conducted by using smart pls or emos dia guna factor loading tapi dia sebenarnya merujuk kepada benda yang sama which is chromba alpha chromba alpha ni merujuk kepada the reliability value for each instrument for each item not for each instrument for each item sama je boleh so, if, if kalau dia ada 40 questions so kita nak reduce it to 10 we just only pick the items with uh, the chromba alpha more than 0.7 lah is, mm. it, is that possible chromba alpha yes possible 0 0.05 or factor loading uh, factor loading also 0 0.05 0 0.5 0 0.5 and above okay but make sure uh, make sure you include all the items that measuring the different different sub-construct within your instrument. Maksudnya setiap sub-construct tu dia ada representative dia. Faham? Sekejap ni saya tunjuk ada tak yang student saya sekejap ni eh. Saya cuba cari student saya yang ada sub-construct. Ini satu contoh eh. Ha, ni for example, uh, the student ni use sleep quality as one of the variable. So in, he, uh, in her study, she defines sleep quality as uh, 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 apa tu based on sleep quality and daytime symptom. So ada dua benda. Sleep quality, they want he, she want to measure sleep quality ni. Sorry, sleep habit sebenarnya ni. Sleep habit ni according to sleep quality and daytime symptom. Dua benda. Okay, she indicated this two elements, these two elements in her operational definition. So, in her items, in the item ni, we need to make sure that the two elements ni indicated. Ada di ukur. Okay, so for example, I feel daytime sleepiness all long day. I feel daytime sleepiness all day long. Daytime symptom. I feel daytime sleepiness during lecture only. Contoh. Ha, ni. Dua item ni. Okay, the rest is sleep quality. Ini man, ini yang biasanya kita akan buat dalam content validity lah. Okay, kita akan reflectkan kedua-dua ni dan kita akan tengok ni. Tally ke tak dengan your operational definition. Eh, macam tadi macam kita nak reduce pun tadi, kita kena make sure yang setiap ni ada representative dia. Representative item to represent that particular sub-construct. Okay. Boleh eh? Boleh. Okay, any questions so far before we proceed to the next topic?
ada eh. This slide I not yet uh, upload sebab betul-betul uh, baru siap tadi. Okay. Research uh, instrumentation in qualitative research. Okay. Tadi kita dah complete on instrument in quantity, now instrument in quality pula. Okay. So this is our LO. There are three LOs. Okay, so at ni tukar ni. Credibility, transferability. Tukar ni. Conformability. Okay, so at the end of the session, you should be able to define the research instrument in qualitative studies. Okay, and then develop interview protocol, hopefully. Then define credibility, transferability, dependability and confirmability in quali qualitative study. Okay. Okay, so different with quantitative study. Eh? So in qualitative study, okay, in qualitative study, the researcher is the instrument in semi-structured or unstructured qualitative interviews. Dalam kajian kualitatif, instrumen dia adalah the researcher himself or herself. Tak sama dengan kuanti. Dalam kuanti, dia punya instrumen adalah the questionnaire. Okay, dalam kuali, the, uh, the, the instrumen is the researcher himself or herself. Okay, so it refers to researcher as an active respondent in the research process. Okay, researcher ni dia memainkan peranan yang sangat penting dalam kajian kualitatif. Okay, so researchers need to use their sensory organs, okay, to grasp, uh, to grasp uh, the, uh, the the study objects, mirroring them in their consciousness, where they uh, where they then are converted into phenomenological representation to the interpreted, to be interpreted. Sorry. Okay, so it is through the researchers' facilitated interaction that a conversational space is created. That is an arena where respondents feel safe to share stories on their experiences and life work. Ha, sebab tu, sebab yang kita belajar sebelum ni, orientasi kualitatif tak sama dengan kuantitatif. Eh? So, kualitatif ni, we want to learn regarding our respondent life experience. So, that's why we need to be very close to them. Okay, so that's why the researcher play a very crucial or important role in qualitative okay okay so unique researcher characteristics have the potential to influence the collection of empir empirical material the techniques uh, the verbal techniques uh, the get body uh, body gesture techniques for example that you use can influence the quality of your the uh, the quality of the data that you collect okay Interviewer affects the organization of talk in interaction and then the processes by which the talk is produced. Uh, you, rest, you are responsible to create a very comfortable environment to your respondent. Okay. Inconsistencies in interview style and approach may affect the quality of the research conversation and ultimately the study finding. So you need to take care of your emotions during the interview. Style pun kena make sure kita guna satu style yang consistent. Okay. Interviewers should receive the same standard training with an eye toward producing consistent strategies and credible finding. Okay, so this one, if you have more than one researchers, if, we, if let's say you work, you are working in team. Uh, kalau you all ada team, then setiap team ni make sure kita bagi training yang sama. Okay, supaya kita boleh maintain the uh, the uh, the style consistencies ni during the interview. Okay. So researchers are differently calibrated instruments. So different researcher sebenarnya dia adalah unik. Dia akan ada preference dia sendiri. Different calibrated instrument. Tapi nak mengelakkan bias ataupun error ni, so that's why we need to provide them with equal training program. Okay, sebelum pergi buat data collection tu kena ada satu training yang sama kalau kita bekerja dalam team. Okay, so level of researcher involvement in qualitative interview ni 
will determine okay the quality that you manage to get from your respondent level of participation ah uh, eh okay role of qualitative researcher kita boleh tengok dalam beberapa segi okay the first one research instrument are designed by the researcher because a qualitative researcher cannot use instrument designed by previous researcher so you need to develop your own tools okay so that's why you, uh, interview protocol tu sebenarnya dia membantu kita sahaja tapi the main idea is still from the researcher okay so qualitative researcher must design interview guides okay observation protocols or observation guides or observation checklist and all other means of recording data needed for the execution of a study sebelum so, kita we before we enter in uh, entering the field to do the to do the data collection you need to prepare all these guides okay so that during your interview tu kita tak adalah uh, conduct the, the interview tu without any guidelines kadang-kadang takut kita tersasar okay so researchers uh, has a high likelihood of introducing his or her bias uh, kita tak nak during the interview tu kita terlalu obviously showing our bias Okay, researcher may design tools that will only confirm his or her own bias, which is the instrument would negatively affect the trustworthiness of the study. Okay, ini kita tak nak sangat. Walaupun, even though in qualitative, we cannot avoid bias. But as much as possible, we need we need to indicate or we need to control our personal bias in influencing our uh, in influencing the answer given by our respondent. Kita tak nak jawapan tu sebenarnya daripada kita. Okay, tapi kita nak jawapan tu daripada respondent. Okay. Researchers emotion affect the data and data affect researchers information. Okay, vice versa. Okay, so people undertake a core study because they are interested in the issue, the problem or the topic. Uh, probably some of the qualitative researcher ni, he or she interested with the issue because he or she has previous experience. Uh, contohnya breast cancer, she already experienced it before. Uh, so that's why uh, she can, uh, she interested to can continue or further the study. Okay, related to the area contohnya. Okay, the fact that the qualitative researcher can relate quite well to the issue Uh, they are studying puts them in a fairly emotional state. Uh, they start akan ada bias dia lah sebab dia ada experience tu. Okay. And then this emotional state has some bearing on the data that is collected and how it is collected. Uh, so emotion dia tu boleh mempengaruhi jawapan ataupun soalan yang ditanya ataupun jawapan yang diberikan oleh respondent tadi. Okay. In connection to the previous point, so emotions bring out participant vulnerability. So this seems to happen more in interviews where the qualitative researcher and participant are involved in a constructive dialogue. Okay, the qualitative researcher need to plan how to deal with participants' vulnerability and the researcher's vulnerability. Dua-dua vulnerable kalau dalam situasi breast cancer tadi contoh. Okay, dua-dua pernah melaluinya, dua-dua pernah ada uh, pengalaman pahit, pengalaman manis. Uh, so kita tak nak pengalaman responden tu sebenarnya mempengaruhi lagi emosi responden kita. Okay, so that the researcher may also experience some emotional challenge that can make him or her vulnerable on a personal level or on the ability to carry on the study effectively. Okay, so the vulnerability that comes from the researcher as an instrument must therefore be considered carefully in planning and carrying out the qualitative study. Okay. Okay, ni yang saya kata tadi, qualitative ni dia tak free from bias. Eh? Memang akan ada bias. But still, we need to control. Okay, the researcher bring his or her bias to the qualitative study. The subjectivity of the researcher is something to be embraced, not controlled for or eliminate. Tak boleh, memang tak boleh. Qualitative promotes embracing subjectivity. Indeed, trying to hide the bias weakens the research study's trustworthiness. 
Okay. Trustworthiness ni another term that referring the that referring to uh, validity of the study in quantitative. Kalau dalam quantitative kita guna term uh, validity but in qualitative kita guna the word trustworthiness, keboleh percayaan. Okay. So spelling out the researcher's bias clearly helps increase the study's credibility. So ni kalau dalam chapter 4 or chapter 3 eh, the quality the researcher need to indicate Okay, need to describe his or her background related to the area. Dia memang kena cerita dia punya biografi sikit. Macam mana dia boleh ada minat terhadap bidang tersebut. So that you spell out your bias kat situ. Okay, so that bila reader baca, reader tahu uh, you all punya bias tu sampai mana. Okay, so kita nak tahu. That's why uh, transparency ni sangat penting for qualitative researcher. You all kena spell out semua. Mana yang related to the study. Kalau you all ada experience related to breast cancer for example. So you kena describe sejak bila kena apa the process that you went through and so on. Okay. And then uh, this is done through the process of researcher's reflexivity. Okay which is the self-critical analysis of the researcher's bias, assumptions, background, expertise as pertaining to the proposed qualitative study. So reflexivity, reflexivity ni tempat di mana you all ceritakan latar belakang you all. Memang kena ada dalam qualitative report. Qualitative report study memang kena ada reflexivity ni. Okay. Ni reflexivity eh. So it help the researcher to become a good instrument which is a critical analysis of self as a researcher. So bila kita tahu kita bila kita tahu latar belakang kita macam mana dan kita akan reflect balik mana yang patut kita intervene mana yang kita tak patut intervene during the interview sebab proses ni dia akan uh, dia akan mempengaruhi uh, start daripada awal pemilihan tajuk sampai hujung dalam qualitative study ni. Okay so reflexivity force the researcher to re-examine his or her position uh, in relation to method theory participants and the self. Tiga, tiga, empat, empat ni dia boleh mempengaruhi eh, macam mana respon dia. Sebab dalam instrumen kan, sebab dia instrumen. Dia akan mempengaruhi pemilihan method, kaedah interview, bagaimana interview dilaksanakan, pemilihan teori, pemilihan participant and diri sendiri. Okay. So the qualitative researcher does this to increase accountability Okay, accountability for the knowledge that is produced. Okay, next one, types of self. Dia ada tiga jenis. Okay, research-based self. Diri kita, diri kita. Okay, first bias, uh, research-based self ni referring to the bias that come from the person's research training and experience. Okay, bias tu datang bila kita attend the training. Training related to the research ni. So, basically the Qualitative, uh, qualitative study is affected by how the researcher was trained in research and uh, on his or her past experience conducting research. Kalau kita ada experience ni sebenarnya baguslah. Okay. And then the researcher is likely to bring some self from his or her historical, social, academic and personal background. So ini kita kena aware. Kalau kita ada Uh, historical back, uh, historical background or historical experience related to the phenomena related to the issue then probably during the conversation with our respondent we may okay insert our bias without we acknowledge it okay and then situationally created self that is self created during the research study as the researcher carries out the study he or she can develop new identities Possible juga. Okay. Maksudnya identity masa di interview tu, masa during the interview berlangsung tu dia boleh develop a new identity. Okay. And then, tak apa. Okay. Ni conversational space. Masa kita buat interview eh. So it is related to empathy, transparency and unconditional positive regard are felt. Okay. We establish rapport with research participant which is feeling of interpersonal connection uh, which is necessary for the qualitative interviewer and interviewee to develop a partnership. 
Ha, kita nak develop supaya the relation uh, kita nak develop a very comfortable relationship between uh, interviewer and interview uh, interviewee so that the interviewee ni uh, didn't hide uh, 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 apa tu the important information from us. Kadang-kadang kalau kita tak berjaya build repo ni responden susah nak bagi jawapan. Okay. That's why eh, bila kita arrange uh, apa tu the interview ni make sure kita uh, for example FGD focus group discussion. So make sure the characteristics of the participant ni similar. Dia tak ada kita tak masukkan boss sekali dengan subordinate. Okay kita kena consider all that criteria. Okay so this is the role of a researcher in data collection. Okay first the researcher must know the language of the participant and use it appropriately to communicate with them. Dah kita tahu responden kita siapa, the sensitive dia, dia punya sensitivity and so on. So kita patut guna the language that suit them. So ini kita panggil critical language awareness. Okay? So critical language awareness ni it is it is an aspect of reflexivity. Okay? Criteria of reflexivity. Okay, yang kedua, researcher must respect the culture of the participant. Okay, the researcher needs to contextualize the communication that he or she has with the participant. And then having some good foundation knowledge about the culture of the participant can help the researcher prepare and carry on the study well. Okay, so kita kena tahu dulu budaya. Ini kalau kita ada literature review yang bagus, dia akan membantu kita dah dekat tahap ni. Okay, yang ketiga, the researcher must respect the research participant. So, we kita kena respect sama ada they are poor, educated, rich, poor, uh, educated or illiterate, male or female, no matter their geographic, socio-economic, linguistic, religious, racial, tribal, gender or academic background must be treated with respect and dignity. That's why kena ada uh, interview protocol. Okay, sebab takut kadang-kadang kita terlepas pandang. Okay, the next one, trust depends on the previous assumption. So how we can build trust with our interviewee? So uh, in which we can maintain the trust ni by building, uh, apa tu, by uh, securing the, the, three, uh, the, the first three elements ni. Okay. Okay, so these are the types of question in qualitative interviews. Saya dah tak tunjuk eh, structure and structure tu. Ini beberapa uh, uh, jenis eh, yang dipropose oleh Spratly 1979. Okay, dia propose ada empat jenis uh, uh, apa tu uh, question, soalan yang kita boleh tanya during the qualitative interview. Okay, the first one yang berbentuk descriptive question which is prompt the interviewee to provide a general account of what happened or what is the case. Okay, so uh, for, for the purpose of describing ni, we can ask the question related to biographical information. For example, what do you do for a living? Okay, next one, anecdotes. Okay, for example, what happened that day? Next one, life history. For example, how did you come to live in London? Example, we let them describe. Okay, second one, structural question. It is about how the interviewee organize his or her knowledge. Okay, so they prompt interviewees to identify the categories and framework of meaning that they use to make sense of the world. Okay, so we may ask question like, what does it mean to be an innocent victim of a crime? Ataupun, how did you decide to have an NHIV antibody test? It is a very structured. Maksudnya, kita point out benda tu. Okay. And then, contrast question. Allow the interviewee to make comparison between events and experiences. For example, would you rather report a crime and run the risk of revenge or keep quiet and be safe from harassment? Or did you prefer working in the public or the private sector? Okay, kita bagi dua benda untuk dibandingkan kepada responden kita. Next one, the last one, evaluative questions, which is about the interviewee's feeling towards someone or something. Okay, 
So for example, we can ask question, how do or did you feel about this? We can be more specific by using or by asking a particular emotion. Did you afraid when you took the blood test? Mm -hmm. Kita nak tahu dia punya emotion dia. We evaluate. We come up with the evaluative question so that we know their preference. Okay. Okay. So these are the roles of researcher in data analysis. Kita tinggal satu slide kini. Hold on eh. Tu ni tertinggal ni. Tu tu ada ada. Okay, this one is the rule of researcher in data analysis. Okay, in data analysis, the main purpose is we want to seek understanding through verbal and non-verbal communication, verbal and non-verbal. That's why we should analyze both the overt and covert meaning of what participants communicate. That's why when during the uh, transcribing, eh, even uh, the long, uh, apa tu, the word, uh, meaning that the time that the respondent uh, need to answer the question ni, kita akan record dalam our transcribe because it give meaning. Okay, it give meaning for qualitative study. Okay, the facial expression pun you need to indicate in your transcribe. That's why it is very important for the transcribing process ni being done or being completed by the researcher himself or herself. Sebab supaya dia boleh record. Okay, dalam keadaan menjawab soalan tu apa emosi ataupun apa the facial expression that been showed by the respondent. Semua tu kena indicate. Okay, sebab kita nak semua tu ada keselarian. Okay, kalau let's say kita rasa dia sedih. Okay, the respondent, our respondent feels sad. Okay, is it tally with uh, the facial expression ataupun the words yang digunakan? Sama tak? Tally tak benda tu? Okay. So depends on researchers linguistic competence eh. So macam mana kita nak analyze, macam mana kita nak uh, illustrate our finding ni depending on the researchers linguistic competency, cultural understanding ni sangat penting. Okay and uh, and correct interpretation of what the researcher hears and see. Semua kena ada. Okay cultural understanding, linguistic competence, term yang digunakan tu. Adakah kasar ke? Lembut ke? Sesuai ke dengan budaya dia? Okay. And then the second one, we want to seek clarification and to summarize data. Okay. Dr. Naomi, yes. before that, uh, since uh, we need to interpret uh, what we hear and what we see, but it doesn't mean that we need to write in our dissertation, right? As, uh, let's say, dengan wajah menjengkelkan. You can. You can uh, yeah. You can do it. Yes, I'm serious. I'm serious. This is the special about quantitative. Because sometimes we can highlight uh, uh, apa tu, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the differences that what, what being said with, uh, with his or her facial expression. Either he or she give you the, uh, the honest answer or not. Okay. Yeah, so you can okay, highlight. Okay, okay, I got it. I got it. Ah, thank you, thank you. Ah, eh? So then uh, another uh, uh, role of research, researcher in data analysis for qualitative is we want to seek clarification and to summarize data. That's why so, tadi nak reflect balik yang Elwa punya soalan tadi. So other than you you use the their direct quotation, you can actually put in bracket. But the, the facial expression is what? Uh, they can give meaning. Kita tak interpret differently but Kita indicate apa dia punya uh, ekspresi muka pada masa tu. We let the reader interpret. Kita ada interpretation kita tapi kita biarkan juga reader kita interpret apa maksud dia. Ha. Ha. Itu being trust. Apa dia? And also body gestures dia lah. Dia yes. senang duduk, senang duduk semua macam tu. Yes. Tu. Dan kalau kita nampak dia tak comfortable gerakkan kerusi pun kita boleh indicate. The eyes ke, kadang-kadang kita nampak kadang-kadang eyes mata dia pandang bawah, pandang atas. Something fishy. So we can highlight that in our report. Tak semestinya wording uh, ataupun dia punya verbal verbal answer only. Boleh? Uh -huh. 
So apa sahaja daripada kita punya informan, kita boleh transcribe dan kita boleh uh, terjemahkan untuk jadikan kita punya findings in our dissertation, right? Yes. Okay, thank yes. you Dr. Nomi. Okay, so then clarification ni, the clarification during the data analysis ni, we need clarification. So clarification help the researcher to avoid misinterpretation. So biasanya how do, how do we do the clarification ni? Probably through the triangulation ataupun through audit trail. Ha, contoh nanti saya, saya explain apa benda tu. Okay so summarization helps the researcher create a big and complete display of the different connection and ramification of the topic or problem under exploration. Okay next one. Okay researcher must present, uh, must present a clear audit trail about how he or she conducted the study, analyze the data and interpret the findings. So the practice ni, audit trail ni, audit trail ni means that, okay, after you completed your transcribing, you send the copy to your respondent, okay, for them to check. Either, okay, what been transcribed is consistent with what he or she answered during the interview. Uh, itu audit trail. Kita double check. Uh, eh? Kita bagikan. Bahas transcribe tu kita bagi kat dia biar dia tengok. Biar dia check betul tak apa yang kita transcribe. Okay. Supaya dia confirmkan. The consistent, consistent jawapan yang diberikan tu. Okay. So this practice ni could increase your study trustworthiness. Means that you can report this one as part of the proof of your study of your data trustworthiness. Okay. okay, researcher must check and recheck the analysis for accuracy. Researcher should also use triangulation in the process of addressing the contradiction, if any. So, if we, if let's say lah, eh, after we go through the triangulation, ah, sorry, after we go through the data, our data, the data that we have, okay, based on the transcribe and then based on the literature review, probably based on the theory, you see some uh, apa tu, uh, contradiction. Uh, ada nampak perbezaan. So what you can do is triangulation. What is triangulation? Triangulation is the technique that you use to check the contradiction or the differences in your data. Okay, meaning that try by trying by the word trying ni, meaning that you have at least three method. Tiga kaedah yang kita gunakan untuk Uh, untuk uh, reconfirm, untuk reconfirm and recheck our data. First, probably through transcribe, audit trail, okay, document analysis. Uh, boleh jadi tiga dah. Next one through field note, or probably through observation, triangulation. At least three method to triangulate, try to reconfirm our finding. Faham eh? Triangulation ni kaedah yang kita gunakan untuk uh, memastikan jawapan yang kita dapat itu adalah konsisten. So kaedah dia lebih daripada tiga. So kurang-kurangnya tiga. Okay so we explore the unusual or unanticipated response. Okay so for example kalau dalam kuantitatif eh. So biasanya the uh, unusual or, un, un, uh, or unanticipated response ni we refer to extreme case, extreme value or outliers. So in quantitative ni, we will omit this outliers. But in qualitative, we will entertain. Kita tak akan buang. Okay, so dalam qualitative ni, it is important to explore, uh, explore them further and to report them. Yang yang ni lah sebenarnya kita nak tengok, the unusual ni, the special case. So it is known as strange of uh, qualitative study because it give the possibility to probe into responses or observation as needed and obtain more detailed description and explanation of experiences, behavior and belief. Kita akan probe lagi bila kita nampak ada perbezaan, ada differences ni. Ingat eh, in qualitative, we are not looking for similarities. We are looking for the uniqueness of the individual. Kita nak unik tu. Okay. Next one, the role of researcher in data interpretation. Ni kita ingat eh. Nak masuk nak interpret lah. Data tadi dah collect. Nak analisis nak interpret. 
interpretation interpreting data so remember as a researcher because the researcher as the instrument our emotion and our bias fundamentally construct and reflect meaning okay we have the data now we are going to give meaning so who's going to give meaning us our uh, but we as researcher okay so there is tendency of qualitative researchers interpretation to be fairly constructed or erroneously made possible apa yang kita baca apa yang kita interpret tu sebenarnya tak betul error okay researcher is responsible to ensure that data interpretation is accurate and aligned with the purpose of the study so this one sama kita refer balik the triangulation method tadi supaya interpretation kita tu tak tak salah ya yeah, elhawa tak 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 teringat coquex codes category ha. teams untuk ha. itu untuk part technical dia uh -huh. part analysis tu coquex tu ha itu untuk kita develop kat itu tak ada technical part lah but now we want to give meaning based on the coding based on the category now we want to give meaning what does it mean Okay. Yes. Uh, bila kita kita buat apa reconfirm and retract. Ah uh, tu kan kita kena ni dengan kita punya respondent tu. Mm -hmm. Kita punya ni lah. So ah uh, bila kita masuk bila kita dah check dengan dia dia, dia punya macam bila kita apa nak cakap interpret dia punya facial expression pun kita include juga body gesture dia semua tu kita mention juga ke dalam tu. And then dia dia tengok juga ke apa yang kita tulis tentang dia punya dia kita mention tentang facial expression dia body gestures dia tu so dalam tu okay in your transcript you not yet include your interpretation uh, interpretation is in your final report but in your transcribing you just may indicate their physical state at that time when he or she answered your question uh, tapi kita oh. boleh dekat uh, dia, uh, tapi kita tak interpret lagi kita just indicate subject or objectively indicate Ha, kita tak letakkan maksud lagi. Dapat the maksud tu the, the interpretation tu when we prepare the report dalam bab 4 tu. Hatu kita tak perlu share dah. Okay. Alright. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So four ways to make data interpretation focus on the research problem rather than the researcher's bias are recommended below. First, okay, the focus of data interpretation must be on the theoretical framework. Ha, so maksudnya crucial lah untuk you all ada teori. But it is also for possible for qualitative study to do not have theory possible. So kalau yang tak ada teori tu boleh skip lah this part. For those yang ada, macam mana kita nak keep track study kita supaya tak tak terlalu banyak bias kita. So then you compare with your framework, theoretical framework. Okay, so this framework is supposed to be the lens through which the researcher sees the phenomenon under exploration. So during the data collection, analysis and interpretation, the researcher must check and recheck how the data contribute to the meaning of the phenomenon from the perspective of the prepared theoretical framework. Uh, so you all can faham betul-betul teori. So then uh, uh, during your uh, the process of data collection, analysis and so on, eh, you need to still refer to your theory. Kena adalah teori itu sebagai guide. Okay. And then... Data interpretation must be aligned with the research problem, purpose statement and the, and the research question. So ini kena kena ada selalu. So the data interpretation, the researchers and participants subjectivity must be made visible. Uh, visible ni maksud saya kata tadi lah eh. You kena declare you all punya background, bias, experience and so on. Kena buat, kena bagi nampak. Okay, through reflexivity, the researcher is able to clearly state his or her bias through thick description and direct quotes from the participants. The researcher can reveal the participant's subjectivity. So that's why in your chapter 4, you report or you quote, you use the direct quotes from your transcript. Okay, kita nak tunjukkan the participant subjectivity tu. Okay, demonstrate the subjectivity of both parties can actually help increase the study credibility. Okay, and then lastly, create realities objectivity by building on individual subjectivities. Okay. 
Ha, ni kalau dalam kuanti ni, kuali ni kita kena faham eh, dia prone towards subject, not object. Okay, so it is well established that QLR, qualitative study is subjective. Okay. Researchers rule in reporting. Okay, so when you report, make sure you report the truth. Okay, so researcher must align, uh, must align with the research problem, goal, question and theoretical framework. Kena tengok berulang-ulang kali. Kita punya research question, a goal, objective, okay and so on. Tengok berulang-ulang kali supaya kita tak lupa dan supaya dapatan kita tu selari dengan apa yang kita nak. Okay. Okay, so our commonsensical notions about the world that is what we feel we already know about it constrain our abilities to change how we see and think about the object of our study. Nah, ini yang kita takut eh. For this reason, the qualitative researcher must strongly stick to the new insights from the study instead of the confirmation of their own bias. Okay, be open with any finding that you got from your respondent. Do not stick to your own bias. You do not stick to your own past experience. It's probably what you find now might be different with your previous experience. Okay, so the researcher who reports only on finding that confirm what they had in mind prior to the study is simply bias. Ha, ini kita tak nak. Bias ni bias negatif. Eh? Kita tak nak. Okay, to be able to report the finding truthfully, so qualitative researchers must regularly question the assumptions Okay, about what they take to be normal and seek ways to upset conventionalized ways of thinking. Okay, can go beyond. Research is not done only to confirm what other researchers have found or what the researchers believe to be true. If your finding is different from previous study, you should be proud of, proud of it. Okay, it is a new thing, a new contribution. So jangan risau kalau finding you all tak sama dengan teori dalam kuali ni eh. Kuanti pun sama ada tapi dalam kuali ni dia lebih mini dia lebih. Okay. So it is about getting insights on a topic as expressed by the research participant. A good qualitative researcher must be able to report the finding truthfully even if they challenge his or her assumptions. Walaupun tak sama dengan assumption kita. Background, knowledge, background knowledge, belief system and even values. Okay. Then next one, okay, four, pay, four phase for process to interview protocol refine, refinement. Okay, yang ni saya share dekat chat box ni. Eh. Yang ni saya tak sempat lah eh, but uh, please read this article. Tengok ni, eh. kat mana saya letak artikel ni. Okay, this one. Alamak tak boleh. Tengok ni. Kalau oh, via WhatsApp pun tak boleh. Ini okay. saya try. Try lagi sekali. Download ni. Ah, boleh, boleh, boleh. Tara, okay, dapat. Dapat ni. Eh? Try to that one I already converted to words lah. You can find you can find you can find the PDF version actually. Hmm. Tadi saya tak sempat nak shortenkan dia. But one of the way uh mana? Tadi saya betul-betul tak sempat nak shorten kan ni. Tapi tengok the, the overall version that one lah eh. Okay so one of the way that can help you uh, to make sure that you keep track. Uh, apa tu you uh, you are in the right track when uh, when starting or developing your interview protocol, uh, protocol is by developing a protocol matrix like this. Hmm, they come up with the matrix macam ni. Okay this is the first research question. Okay, the first uh, research question. 
Okay. And then this is the uh, the possible question that lead to answer the, this overall question. Okay. There are tips dalam tu. Macam mana the interview question should be, shouldn't be similar with your RQ. Ha, dalam tu nanti you all baca satu-satu. Detail sangat dia punya explanation ni. Okay. So the, uh, the, uh, apa tu, the, the writer ni, the, the scholar ni come up with the Uh, with the matrix like this okay so then he tick where uh, apa tu where, which question answer which uh, uh, sorry which question from provide him or her to which uh, which answer ha ini dia punya ini dia punya interview uh, interview question so ini dia punya RQ pertama okay so before he start the interview okay dia ada dia punya transition uh, transition uh, statement To begin this interview, I would like to ask you some question about the neighborhood. Okay, so this is the question. Eh? So basically, it's lupa nak bagi tahu. So the study ni interested, uh, the study interested to know about the college student socio-political consciousness. Okay, so dia ada sebenarnya tiga, tiga RQ, tapi kat sini dia tunjuk satu. So meaning that for each research question, dia ada three set of metric. They develop three different metrics. Okay. So first RQ ni dia come out dengan 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7, 7 question untuk RQ1. So background information, dia ada how and what extent to student discussion about their life and sense of self and society indicate awareness of social political forces. Ni satu. Yang kedua, indicate understanding of social political forces. Okay, knowledge of the interconnection of socio-political forces. Mak, saya ingatkan saya put. Ini. Next one, acts of critic, uh, critiquing and analyzing socio-political force. Okay. Other ways of thinking of or acting towards social political force. Then last one, how do the student describe themselves and society in relation to the social political force operating in their everyday life? Okay. Ah, then dia ada dia punya transition question here. Ah, dia akan tanya lah soalan ni satu satu. So dia akan tick which I question ni yang akan jawab which ah. Uh, which item which uh, apa tu which item yang akan dijawab which by which question ha ini menarik so then di ujung tu dia ada lagi satu summarization ha dia buat matrik lagi satu ni q1 q2 q3 dia answer apa dia buat macam ni so dia make sure that dia akan dapat ke semua ni okey ha cuba go through that article it's very interesting okey dan saya nak tunjuk ni lah Semua, saya rasa kita stop kat sini lah ya dulu hari ni boleh. Boleh. <laughs> boleh tu. Pasrah dah tu. Okay, but go please go through that uh, that article eh to develop to help you developing your research uh, research protocol. Sorry, interview protocol for qualitative uh, researcher. Okay, ada lagi soalan uh, tak? Yes. Uh, Doktor, kalau kita uh, when when we do the interview session, mm -hmm. there 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 are possi possibilities that the uh, the person that we are going to interview to may come up with a negative statement regarding the uh, some sort of like government mm -hmm. or or that people or these people, you know. So mm -hmm. that that one we cannot uh, include in our research uh, in our thesis, lah, right? Uh, the negative statement sometimes sometimes people tend to to bila dia dah cakap ni kadang-kadang dia dia nak share eh? uh, so kadang-kadang keluar benda yang uh, negative statement lah so is that perlu uh, kita include dalam kita punya thesis tu okey kalau lah statement tu dia dalam bentuk dalam bentuk yang uh, apa tu orang kata a uh, uh, macam menghina sangat then we try to sugar coat lah tapi sebenarnya tak boleh pun sebenarnya we cannot we should report the truth truth lah kita sepatutnya report kebenaran that's why the anonymity to very important in qualitative sepatutnya nanti no transparency dah jadinya uh, no uh, sepatutnya we report tadi siapa yang tanya 
Ramzi ke? Hadi Ramzi. Ah, Ramzi. Okay, so Supposedly we report Ramzi. Supposedly we report because it is based on his or her opinion regarding regarding that phenomena. Okay. Ah, uh, tapi mm -hmm. kalau mm -hmm. kalau let's say you want to change the term, but that's why masa masa during the before the interview too, we need to remind them that the interview is recorded. Okay, and then we will report what ha, what been indicated by them, so so that they are aware lah with whatever the he or she said. Okay, and then uh, in terms okay, of okay. reporting, supposedly we report what he or she said. Tak boleh nak manipulate sebenarnya. Truthful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ha. Masukkanlah semua semuanya. Masukkan semuanya. But make sure dia dia tak lari daripada kajian kita lah. Kan kan kadang-kadang yeah, yeah. tanya mm. benda lain dia jawab, tapi dia komen tu bagi Uh, regarding the opinion regarding the politics ke no uh, make sure it is related uh, sebab, to ah uh, yeah kadang-kadang kalau contoh kita nak buat kajian tentang integriti mm -hmm. among uh, civil servant in Malaysia so kadang dia relate dengan politician mm. relate dengan uh, the top management kan so mm. so that thing that thing pun kita masukkan lah kalau kata benda yeah, tu possible. ada kalau benda akan. tu related yes it's possible but we do not mention anybody lah kita tak mention dia tu siapa ni ah ha, we hide the information that's why ada study kalau let's say you follow the one of the study by Dr Mushir if i'm not mistaken last time he did the study among mak rempit ha, itu pun quite sensitive ada juga study yang buat among the uh, GROs ada juga ha, so itu pun isu-isu sensitif juga ha eh the term term tu memang itulah ah uh, maybe uh, apa tu uh, in integrity area So itulah the the real situation. Kan macam mana anak buah tak jadi mm -hmm, macam mm -hmm, tu kalau mm -hmm. bos tak macam tu. Contoh, contoh, contoh. Contoh je, contoh. Okay, ah, thank contoh. you doktor. <laughs> okay, but if we want to describe or we will we want to learn their true experience itu yang paling ni lah. Ha. Kalau ada words yang boleh buat baik lagi untuk digunakan then we we explain to them. Boleh. <laughs> lagi? Ramai ni saya berjaya menarik ramai kualitatif researcher. Tapi jangan jangan tinggalkan kuanti eh. Saya orang kuanti. But then kan Dr. Nomi, baik baik kuanti ataupun baik kualitatif, hmm. to get the 100% telus finding tu saya rasa is impossible. Hmm. Since kalau kita, let's say, Uh, kita kata kita punya partisipan ataupun kita punya responden from the dalam parameter penjawat awam is sebab masing-masing ada dia punya restriction masing-masing ada dia punya kekangan so macam i think from my humble point of view so kita kena menggunakan bahasa yang bersantun dan berhaluslah dalam menulis atau uh, on our finding lah to write our finding Uh, tapi dia just it just when you uh, directly quote directly quote the answer given by your respondent lah we need that you cannot sugarcoat uh, kalau hmm. uh, in terms of interpreting then you can use the most appropriate terms or, or words kalau kita punya interpretation yes we can use the appropriate term but in terms kalau you use the direct quotation then you cannot change because this yeah. is the answer given by them lah Uh, uh -huh. Yes, I agree with Elewa. Memang it is very difficult to come up with the uh, with the actual or real data, either in qual or quant. Susah, susah. Because in qual it is been uh, it been uh, apa tu uh, uh, affect by the researcher, the researcher opinion, the researcher view, the researcher uh, by the researcher bias in quantitative. The concern is different because we are not interested to look at the unusual case or outlier. We are we are interested in common thing. Uh, so susah. Generalization. Ah, uh, we are interested in other thing right? Generalization. Kalau in quality, kita kita interested in uniqueness. Tapi that one is the uniqueness of qualitative. That what that's why you need to reveal what their true ex, uh, opinion. Sebab kita nak kita nak dia punya uniqueness tu. Apa apa maksud dia? Apa experience dia? Apa pengalaman dia? Tapi kan Dr. Nomi, we, 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 we want the uniqueness but we, we also want the the generalization, the numbers. So so we can compare the quant and qual, the data, the how how far this 
uh, kajian kengo so macam tapi tamak lah tu dah lah novice je tapi dah tamak nak tahu sampai detail macam tu okay tak apa tak apa, tak apa. Inquan, we are not interested in generalization uh, El Helwa we are not tak inquan inquan ah uh, inquan yes lah uh. Uh, tapi kalau tamak tu ameh lah sambung lagi eh <laughs> okay ni ada question before we stop ada lagi tak soalan? Kita sambung next week. InsyaAllah next week tu saya akan habiskan semua. Banyak kat ni. Wow. Sikit lagi. Hak ni sikit je lagi sebenarnya. Tak banyak pun. Lagi few more slide. Tapi tak apalah. Okay. Uh, lagi? Ada lagi soalan? Ada lah eh? Okay. So thank you so much guys. So hopefully you forgot to mark your attendance uh, in uh, in Putra Plus. Uh, siapa tak mark tu tak ada lah eh. Tak ada, tak ada. <laughs> I oh, Dr. Nomi, yes, yes. Uh, lah sorry sebab macam ada kawan-kawan yang tanya macam uh, when to submit the uh, apa tu, assignment analysis critic and uh, uh, research article critic and research article analysis sebab ada yang PM kata tak buat lagi so they want to know how to do it semua-semua So saya rasa boleh refer dekat Putra Blast. Saya rasa dah clear guideline dekat Putra Blast kan. Betul. The template, the metric, the ha, words the and everything. Clear. Semua clear tu. Saya tak tahu kenapa tu. Okay, in terms of submission, uh, for the critic tu you can you can already submit lah. Uh, but that one I will not review lah. I will just review your your draft. Uh, I will just review your draft before the final submission. But the rest tu saya tak review lah. Tak sempat lah nak review because I thought the guidelines very clear lah dekat tu saya dah bagi clear dah bagi contoh macam mana nak buat it's very simple yang metric tu senang sangat ha, the template tu dah ada dah dah bagi dah template tu okay hmm. okay so thank you so much Allah Helwa and everybody so see you insyaAllah next week ya eh. next week saya akan bagi tip final exam insyaAllah okay terima okay, kasih Dr. Nomi insyaAllah thank you Assalamualaikum thank you Dr. Assalamualaikum terima kasih Dr.